끝내. 합키. 합키. Okay, Paul. This is lesson one for Paul. For Hapki, though, he's done a little bit of martial art in the past, and now he's just uh, starting his white belt Hapki, and he lives in New York. He's an Australian that lives in New York. <laughs> so we go step by step for the uh, Hosen Sul and the basic white belt syllabus. I'll teach him step by step. For those traditionalists, I have changed the blocks from here to here. I want everything by the face to protect the jawline. It's a same, similar action to here. So those people wondering why we're not doing this as much, type one, no, I'm keeping that in the system for the children because it teaches action, reaction, and, and the power. But Hapkido, as the complete art of self-defense and the original mixed martial art, we need to keep our hands up. This is very important. It's different from sparring in a Taekwondo tournament when they don't allow punches to the head. So you can probably keep your hands down a bit more, right? But you need them up for a real realistic situation. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, Paul, is gonna do some movement. The key to self-defense for those watching this for the first time as well, and uh, just beginner or whatever level, is movement and evasion. So what I call self-protection. Protecting, protecting yourself. Moving, getting away, not fighting back. Because remember, this is defensive art. You're getting away. It's not fighting where you can fight back if you have to, like hit you know, throats and noses and things like that. But that's only if your life's in danger. So you can get away from a lot of situations without putting yourself in a danger by moving and blocking in the first place. So this is what we're going to do first, just some movement. So first of all, we're always going to get in the habit of keeping the hands up. First thing I'm going to do is, I don't know if you can see my feet, but we'll uh, right back stance. I've got foot, right foot back pull, 70% weight, 70 to 80% weight back. Now in line, that this is in line here, and the, my, my, one toe's pointing out, one's in front, and I'm bending both knees, and basically one, most of my weight is on the back leg. 70 or 80% depending, so I can then move away, I can lift that leg up if someone's trying to hit me, I can snap that leg out quickly if I need to, and I can run and move and from this position. So I'm going to do some footwork exercises first. Actually, I'll keep the camera at that angle. And I'll say, so everybody, first of all, I'll go back to this angle first to make sure everyone understands. Hands up. Hands up in a, a non-aggressive guard position. You don't do it like that. <laughs> so you open yourself. You don't do it like this. Put your hands out too far. They can grab your wrist. Just something comfortable, talking to people. So I'll show you from a side on angle there. Very, I like the, very similar to the Wing Chun type stance. So I quite like that. With the open hand, and you can talk with your hands. All right, so oh, leave me alone, I have no problem with you. And body language, very important to show you don't want any trouble. So the moment you start getting aggressive and doing this, they're gonna think they're gonna be in a fight. Uh, you wanna, this is self defense, this is self protection. You wanna get away, you do not wanna fight. No one wins a fight. It's a lot different from sparring in the ring and the UFC, you see, and MMA, and all that. It's a lot different. We're talking about self defense. Hapkido is the complete art of self defense, with elements of. Karate, Taekwondo, Jiu Jitsu, Kung Fu, Aikido. It's got pretty much elements of everything to make it a very comprehensive art. The complete art and the original mixed martial art mixes Bruce, like Bruce Lee concert of Jeet Kune Do, mixing Western boxing to blocks, to movements, to kicks, everything. Lower kicks, sweeps. So you've got a lot of lower kicks in Hapkido, not the high kicks you do in Taekwondo, but we really emphasize midsection and lower for the kicking, all right? You can do high kicks for fun and jump kicks for fun, but it's different from self-defense, all right? Or sport. So we segregate it all. So, okay, first thing's up, hands up, right foot back. Now what I'll do is I'll put my feet, I'll put this down so you can see my footwork. So I'm just, all I'm gonna do is this, get the hand, I keep the hands up in the center line all the time, I'll bend down a bit, it's a show. So just to the, to the right there in a 45 angle, 45 yep. angle, I want you to, so put, so put your right foot back, now, first, go straight on. Now step to the right at the 45 angle and lean. Get, I'll, get back, I'll stand back a little bit. Lean and get the hands up. Now step back. Now go the other way, 45 angle back. So I'm going 45 angle backwards, all right, everybody? So for here, 45 angle, and back forward, and then back the other way, slide forward, bring the feet up, slide back, slide forward, slide back. Just keep doing this movement on your own time. I'll just check that one. Good. Get, always get the hands in position. Get in the habit. Whatever you do, keep these hands like they're tied in together in this angle, okay? Don't spray them out when you're kicking later or anything. You must get the hands up to protect the face. 
but with locks as well. Okay, so okay, so basic movement there. Now let's do let's do this one now. Side to side, the side to side. Hands up, just underneath the chin level, not in front of the eyes, just there. So you can raise them up when you need to. And you can block when you need to, things like that. So there you go. And then those people watching at home as well, put the music on, you can do all this to music once you get that right technique. But you've got to get the correct technique first. All right, now, right foot back stance again. Now this time I'm going to step my right foot over this way as I'm running away. All right, so over here we practice that. And then back. And then forward at the 45 angle. Back. Sorry, the camera just went out. Yeah. Sorry. This is good. It's, like a dan it's like dancing. So from here, I step over the 45 angle that way. Because often I can block and run away. And that's what you're really meant to do. You're not meant to go back into the opponent. There. Now, when you're in a fighting stance, you normally get your feet like that. When you're running, you can bring it up and then you continue the run, for example. All right? So I know I might slide it here, but I'm not fighting. I'm actually running away as I'm blocking, for example. So, you know, stepping and running. We can go one, two, practice that. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Slide. 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 Run. Step. Run backwards. Run to the angle. All right, that's it. Yeah, so a lot of martial art don't teach the running away. Because <laughs> fighting's a really bad thing. You've got to defend. You have a right to defend yourself. If it gets really serious, you need to hit the eyes, the nose, the throat, the groin, and the knees. Secondary areas include temple, ears, back of the neck, kidney, rib, down the shins, on the foot. And there's also a lot of pressure points we use in the body to enable uh, for more of a non-aggressive situation. All right, so those security or police watching as well, are perfect with the police locks and putting knees on uh, triceps rather than on throats. Okay, so or chest. You can't restrict someone's breathing when you're securing them for a security guard situation or a uh, police situation. But in the street, for normal people, they're just going to run anyway. They're not going to have to restrict anybody. So they're two different things. All right, so there's your movement. Now we'll, now we'll start blocking. The idea of blocking, it's always better to move first, of course. I'll put my hand up just in case and push it away. But if you can't move, then suddenly someone goes bam and grows a grab you, particularly for women. Block like this, okay? So move, move my arms out, okay? So just to start with, just stand in what you call just a stationary stance, as though you're just waiting for a bus or something, someone comes up, and then you step back. At the moment, we'll just do the, the block first. Block one, and then down. Like a natural position, because we're not knowing what's gonna happen. You can't walk around like this all day. <laughs> right? All right, so you don't know what's gonna happen. So two, just down, three, you got that pretty well. Now step back, four, and come back. Now step back, five. Now step back with the other foot, six. Seven. That's it, keep it just about up that shoulder width. Eight. Nine. Ten. All right, that's excellent, Paul. By the way, for those watching, uh, What's well, sure my flags are obviously the Hapkido Mohakwan is our style, Hapkido Mohakwan, under my grandmaster, Sung Su Lee, senior grandmaster, Sung Su Lee. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Taught me a lot over the last 40 odd years. It's been brilliant. Just a great relationship. And um, world top in a federation. All right. So it's actually been about 35 years of being with Mr. Lee. And world top, but I did martial art before that. And then I learned Hapkido and then world top in a federation through him as well. In the seventh dan or degree, they call it in America, in both. And the World Top of the Federation, all based out of Seoul, Korea. So that gets me to Paul's flag. That's Korean. <laughs> so some of the language I'll use is Chumbi, ready position in Korean. Uh, you know, Seja is go in Korean. We can do it. Hanodul, Setnet, Dasat, Yasat, Ildot, Yodol, Ahapyul is one to ten in Korean. So we have that. We like that tradition, you know, keeping that tradition going. Uh, so it's important to respect uh, where it comes from. And Korean martial arts is. Fantastic. As all martial arts, and it's really instructors, most important thing, by the way, but then experience, but not one's better than that. That's what we blend in Hapkido. We have a bit of this, a bit of that, and we take what's useful. Similar what Bruce Lee was doing with Jeet Kune Do, same thing. All right, so very, very important. Now, Jihan Jay, 
one of the very famous Hapkido, which helped, he helped uh, make up the name Hapkido and put the kicks into Hapkido, is in Bruce Lee, one of Bruce Lee's movies, Game of Death. As he goes up the levels, you see Jihan Jay throwing him around, getting thrown around by Bruce Lee. So he, was, he, he invented the name Hapkido. Uh, it's a long story, but you can look at the history as well as time goes on. You've got put the kicks in and the Hapkido name together as well. Still alive in his 80s, like my grandmaster is, which is awesome. Okay, so there's your basic outer blocks. So that's how you get the action. So everybody watching this for the first time, just for blocking, you can do open hand blocks, by the way. So you can do it. Just practice that, Paul, as well, actually. Just practice an open hand palm just from there. That's it. Good, mate. That's it. Just there. 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 It's like a stop. You know, stop and leave me alone, right? <laughs> and they can grab as well. They can, like, come in or grab. But So it's good to practice both. So you do the fist block, open palm. Excellent. So I'm going to do that. Now step back and forward. Just put your hands down. Back without a leg and forward. Back and forward. Keep going. I'll just check the technique. Good. Excellent. With the fingers, keep them tight when you block. When you're striking or blocking, you must keep your fingers tight. The live hand in Hapkido is when we do arm bars and pressure points on the tricep. That's where you do a live hand. You really stretch it out. And that really helps your key energy flow. But we don't want loose fingers when we're blocking, so we're going to get a stub finger. So we keep them tight. All right? Okay. Same with palm strikes and everything as well. Now we're going to start. We've done the basic blocks. That's a good one for beginners who are watching this for the first time. Just to learn how to, if you understand. Actually, Paul, I'll do, um, I'll do, a, gra I'll do a virtual grab. Because obviously people watching this as well will be on YouTube and practicing at home. I'll count the numbers. And those at home can practice the movement as well. You ready? So I'll go to grab you and I want you to step back and block. That's all I need you to do. Ready? And I'll just call normal English numbers. One. That's right. Come back. Two. So those at home watching this, you can get up and practice. Don't just watch. You've got to get up and practice. Three. So you do the same thing. That's right. Four. Excellent. And five. That's right, yeah. And then you may change to the other legs to make sure you practice both stances. Sometimes you may have a position. You can never have a favorite stance in self-defense. Uh, even in, if you are a, a fighter or a spar in a sparring, you've got to be able to you've got to be able to, to move off and use both stances. I feel quite comfortable off both stances. So I've practiced both. Technically, I'm probably a right foot back kind of person, but I'm comfortable on the left because I've done for you as much luck. <laughs> so it helps. <laughs> Comes a habit to hard to break. All right. So now blocking the upper block, Paul. So if someone's trying to. I kind of do a lot of this downward strike like a, so in this situation, depending on if it's a small kid or a lady, they come down, they could possibly, you know, do that block. Or it could be a stick. Now, as I said, evasion's much better. I'd rather take it here and let it slide off or let it slide off the arm than take it on my head. But I'd rather take it on my arm than my head. So for some reason I'd have time to move, I would use my arm. So that's called an upper block or rising block. Okay, depending on what terminology you use. So we're just called maybe upper blocks, just go up, okay? So this is the action. Now traditionally, I know some people watching this go, but oh, I wasn't taught that way, I did karate this way, oh, which is fine, I still like that for traditional purposes, and it teaches that action. But I like uh, the newer way of doing it, more, more practical way, because if I do that, and I'll explain why, if I do that and block somebody, what happens if they quickly smash me in the jaw? Have I got time? To suddenly bring that one that could possibly come across, but it's going to be a bit hard to stop a really hard punch. Have I got time to bring that arm up? So if I do this, now it goes punch me in the jaw. I just do that. It's all I need to do. Just turn it out. Well, even if I don't turn it out, at least I've got that part. I'd rather be hit here than, than here. All right? You can't get knocked out by getting a bad sore arm, but you can get knocked out by the jawline. All right? So let's practice this action. You don't keep it too close so they can hit against you. It's got to be out of it, but still protecting the head. Particularly the jaw. Does anyone practice that? My dog's getting a little excited there. That's it. Up, 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 up. Keep going, Paul. Keep going. Good. And keep the hand here, Paul. Keep the other hand here. Good. Keep going. There's a dog in the background. <laughs> That's it. Hello. 
No, Victoria. Good. Keep going in the background. That's right. Now try the other side. Try the other side. That's it. Hip not too close to the face. Just about a fist length. A fist length. So if I put my other fist there, it'll be about there. Okay. So I want it too close either because I guess use my own fist against me. That would, wouldn't be good either. So I need it a little bit further out, but not too far. They can still get in. You know what I mean? Yep. That's good. So just practice this action. That's right. Good. Good. Make sure you do both sides. Do one side a few times and the other side. That's excellent. Now we do the movement with it. So let's do the same block of the movement. So technically speaking, when you stand out, I move. Okay, lean. See how I lean? Lean out of the way. So if someone's trying to strike downward, I block and lean. And even if I got hit, it probably more likely is to scrape me. It looks like a smash me right here or here. So I'm leaning. Just practice that. Now I'll do it backwards this way. Let's say it's a right-handed attack coming down or a stick or something. And I just go this way, okay? Above the head and lean that way. Good. Keep going. Excellent. And a bit more 45, not so much back pull. I want a more 45 angle. That's better. So I'm, just understand I'm, I'm really coming down and I need you to kind of deflect me. You don't really want to take it full on blow, but it's better than me hitting the head, but I'd rather deflect it. Does that make sense? You may hopefully they miss you and deflect it. Then you can counter strike a lot easier. I'd suggest if somebody is sitting with a stick, we'd have to go pretty serious and strike with a punch or a palm to the nose. Because that's a very serious situation with a weapon. It means they're really trying to hurt you. It's not some drunk just kind of grab you. And, ah. That's it. Perfect. Now, let's say it's left-handed and we go the other way. All right, the other way. So if I did that, so I did one, I'll do it one, two, three, four again. One. That's it. Two. Well, it could be a stick, for example. It could be a, uh, like something, oh, or I'm gonna meet here, like this. Three. I've got one of those rubber things. There. Four. Five. That's right, good, good. Okay, so that's for that kind of strike. Now again, for those watching this on YouTube, you know, for the first time as well, You've got to understand why you do things, <laughs> okay? So I, I'm, very, I'm very particular uh, when I'm teaching is, is make sure you understand the concept and why we actually do something. That's very important, not just tell you to do it and leave it to you, all right? So you've got to understand the practicality of it So and what actually happens in a real situation, all right? So this time, and I'll tell you now, most of the time men get punched or women get grabbed. But it's the same technique defense because I'm coming across there. There's my dog Kido in the background, named after Hapkido. <laughs> like K I D, as in Hapkido. Some people say, is, that, is she named after the Kido diet? <laughs> is she related to Kung Fu Roo? Yeah, the Kung Fu Roo as well. And my mate, the Kung Fu Roo. That's right. Yeah, we'll talk, tell them about that as well. So uh, Kido's in the film with that, and uh, it's awesome. Great dog, this one. Natural guard dog, very good. Okay, someone's getting a bit excited though. All right, so now if I'm punching this way, the right, let's say the right hand coming in, right? So I want you to block this way this time. So this time we're gonna block, just practice that to start with, without the movement. All right, so practice that just to start with, because sometimes you may not have time to move. They might just go boom, and you're up, oh, right? You might even have time to do this, but if you naturally do that, but if you naturally do that, they hit you with this hand, you're in trouble. So I want this action. Whatever's up, that one's next to the face. Okay. Not too close, as I said. All right? Keep it up, keep it up. That's it. Now, this one's an outer block, though. 
Now we're doing outer block. So just outer block, out. It's like two, two it's like a high five, but one we did earlier actually, like that. But high five, curl and lock. And again, you can do an open palm block as well. And then we're gonna learn to move with it. To make it easier for those watching this on YouTube as well, uh, I'll just do one side first. So let's, you've got to, you've got to use imagination a bit. <laughs> so someone's trying to punch, right, I'm going right through the screen. You've got to move to your, it's a right punch I'm doing. So you've got to move to your right to get out of the way. There's inner palm locks as well, which we'll get on to in a minute as well. But let's just try this action, ready? Let's do it by numbers. One. That's good. And you got, everyone knows their math. I hope these Americans know their math. In Australia, we call it maths with an S. <laughs> All right. And Paul's the Australian living in New York, so it's a classic, isn't it? All right. So, if you ever need a car, you see this man, by the way. Car leasing concierge will tell you about how great he is getting a better car. Okay. Yeah. He'll, defend, he'll defend you against the car salesman, the dodgy ones. <laughs> okay, one. And back. Two, and back. Three, and this stage the instructor will watch you. Four, those instructors watching this learn to create. Okay, just bring it here a bit more. That's it, about there, about there. That's good. You can still turn it, that's okay here. You can still strike with a vertical fist strike. You can do a horizontal fist strike. You can do a block. Yeah, as long as it's comfortable here. Because you do get a lot more power when you twist. Striking back or we'll go on to punches in a minute or later on. Just blocking. White belt, I like to be more defensive. Uh, I don't like teaching uh, beginners, particularly children, any violent techniques. I want them to block and move and weave and duck and then understand the concept of violence before we get into all this kick punch stuff, right? Which is, it's important, but you've got to understand concept and when to use it and when not to use it. When to use your brain and, and verbal techniques. Now I'll go the other way. So it's a left-handed punch, and we go this way. I'm moving to my left at the 45 angle, for those who aren't sure. He is getting on film again. There we go. There, and then you make it, then you go, just go slow to start with to get the technique, and then you go harder, you know? See that reaction I'm doing? Now, I know those are watching again, if those are just picking up, I know that's the traditional way, I understand that. I've done a lot of that, that's no problem. But now I want you to do this. It's the same kind of idea, like this, but I'm bringing the hand back to here. So you still get the power. Okay, from the outside, from the outside, all right? Some people bring it back to here, which is fine as well, but I always want it near the face. I'm really particular about protecting a jaw because that's how you get knocked out. If you get knocked out, you'll definitely lose a self defense situation in a fight. Gotta protect the jawline, gotta protect the back of the head if you fall. Part of Hapkido is also learning how to fall. I'll be teaching that in this series as well. That's good, Paul. So there, boom. Boom. Repetition is the key. Now, if you want to put, once you get that right technique, put the music on. Just put your music on and, and get into it like a dance routine. All right, now, okay, so that's your outer block. Down block is when, again, the traditional way was always this. It's just like I did power and I could boom, whatever, but I still want to protect that jawline. So I uh, don't want you to get in bad habits, all right? But traditionally, yes, we did a list, that's fine. And then we'll do a basic movement up and down, that's fine as well, good, all good for movement. But let's get the technique right. And why do we use this block? Someone's trying to punch you in the stomach or the groin, okay? And I'll do that action. Now, if, if, if you're a total beginner, that's watching at home, just do that. And just do the one side, might be easier for do. So Paul, it just gets through the one side at the moment. Left hand, just do the left hand. Or the right, doesn't matter, either way. I can do that. Then you just do that, just the same action. Repeat it over and over again. And then you start to... <laughs> All right, so... I'm watching you, it's backwards. Sorry? I'm watching you, it's backwards. Yeah, that's right, to reverse, that's right, on the thing, yeah. So you're doing your right arm now, aren't you? I'm doing left. 
Is that your left? Is no, your left arm's coming down or this right? Is my arm? Left. This is my left. Oh, that's right. That's right. So your right arm was on it. The right arm block. Your right arm's coming down. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Keep going. That's fine. Keep going. Good. Now change the left. So for your angle, those watching at home as well, I can do that. To start doing that to start with, again, to start doing that, or if you're doing the other side, same thing, start doing that. Then we'll add on the movement to it, okay? Because technically I should move with it. Unless someone just really quickly, it's got a block. Radio, command, oh, command, we'll do the traditional command, means stop in Korean, parallel, and I'll take it back to ready position. Chumbi, breathe in. I'll show you how to do this as well. Breathing in. Left foot comes out and out. Nice and strong. Waist level about fist length in between as well. That's called chumbi. And that is ready position for the next movement. So everyone, parallel, Paul, parallel. Chumbi. Oh, sorry. So breathe in and out. Also, it's very important to do deep breathing or tangent breath. We'll go through that as well. Uh, as well. So now let's do it with the movement. So this time I'm punching you with my right arm and you're going to move to the right. One. Two. Three. Now let me watch you. Four. Great. Get that here. Yeah. Five. Excellent. Now, if I was punching you with the left hand, I go the other way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good, coming on. That's right. That's very good. So, okay. So, there are your three major blocks. We, I started that way for the beginners watching this for uh, lesson one just to get the action right. Sometimes they don't get this. It's very difficult to understand all this back to here. Now, traditionally, it was here, but now I want it to here, protect the jawline, as I said. And your eardrum. Wow, get hit in the ear. That could really hurt too much, your eardrum. So that's why I prefer the hand here. Um, you know, I'd, I'd rather take a punch in the stomach or around here than, than in my head, for sure. But then again, if you have it here, you can still do that, see? Here's so, the word. Here, here. Here. Here, here. here. So but from here... What if I say it? with the ear, I can do every block. So if they suddenly counter strike, I can do that. If they come on the top again, I can do that. If they come underneath, I can do that. So from here, I can still do every, including the inner palm block, which I'm about to do now. So from this, this position, as a counter, my initial block is going to be there. What happens if they go, what happens if they go like this? Boom, boom. Have I got time to go like that? And I no, don't. But I've got time to do that, and then I'll, then I'll cop the second one there, and then I'll strike back okay so the other block is the palm block so again from here i can come in for palm block say someone's trying to grab my chest center line so let's practice it let's do a natural position we're not going to walk around like this and we're not going to walk around like this right <laughs> let's go back to position if we look so we're in a situation all right so palm again traditionally it used to be that i'm just doing it this way there 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 that's it Cross your body. Cross your body. And then faster. Cross, cross your body that way. All right? That's it. Keep it back here. That in the middle. In the middle. Out there. Actually, I come from here and I, I finish in front of my other badge. So I've got to, I wouldn't stop there because they still go through. I've got to push them out of the way. And I can counter strike if I need to, obviously, from there. So again, cross the body. And then start to speed it up as you get more, you know, like swatting flies. <laughs> I'm doing my bam, like bam, 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 bam. It's like knife hand strikes, which we get on to as well in the second lesson. All right, but now that's good. So now we've covered, this is what, just for those who are watching at home again, in lesson one, we've covered the evasion, the basic blocks. I will teach some non-aggressive palm pushes now, 
and then I'll do some knee ex uh, some lifting leg exercises to finish off lesson one. And then lesson two continues from there. All right? So, hands up. Oh, by the way, there's also palm or down block. So we'll do that now as well. Palm or down block. Let's do that. So someone came down. I can push them down and step away. And of course, we do the movement with it as well. You can do that now, actually. Movement, come back. Movement, come back. Movement, come back. This one I've got is easier to do because I'm not having to retract like that or anything. I just simply put one in there and comes back. It's already there. So you can just get used to stepping as well. So basic movement, I'll do in the next lesson. I'll do all these blocks with you know, moving back, moving back, moving forward. That's called basic movement, okay? But you've got to get the right technique first. So I get you to evade first, get the right blocking technique, then we bring in the movement with it, and then we bring in the self-defense techniques to so someone grabs you, et cetera, et cetera. Better to move first before they get a chance to grab you. That's great. So that one's that one, okay? So watching again, downward, 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 okay? Great. Excellent. Okay, well done, mate. All right, so palm pushes. So what I like to do when I'm teaching self-defense, particularly to children and teenagers who don't quite understand the concept of violence and how serious it really is, whether you hit somebody or what you can do to them, and how powerful this can be, you know, I really don't want you in trouble either by using these techniques unnecessarily. But yes, if your life's in danger, you have to hit noses and throats and eyes and things like that. But let's start, start non-aggressive. And that means with a smile on your face, talking, we're out of it. Oh, hey, I'm sorry I bumped into you. I didn't mean to. Have a nice day. Have a smile on your face. Because it's really hard to hit somebody when they've got a smile on their face. <laughs> but if I say things like, hey, mate, you bumped into me first. What do you think you're doing? What do you think is going to happen? Well, it's going to happen. They're going to get aggro and back and forward and yeah, you know, you're then it's going to argue and then it's going to start fist to be flying, right? So I'm sorry. I step back. Sorry, I'm sorry I bumped into you. So a lot of this stuff is actually verbal strategies. And I'm making this part of the grading syllabus as well. You've got to learn to talk your way out of situations, anti-bullying strategies, how to calm people down and be friendly. And you should read that book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dale Carnegie, very good. All right, so very important to, I'm sorry, and step, step back with your hands up, because that's in every language, a non-aggressive posture. But if I go, look, mate, I've just done my lesson at Peter, you better watch out, I think there's going to be a problem. <laughs> All right? So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bump into you, in a, you know, a pub situation, and when they finally open them again. <laughs> you know, that's done in Australia, but not so much in America. You know, you know what I mean? So just, I think on one of my TV shows, you can see me talking about that, yeah, the morning show. And I step back and I, you know, telling the, the interviewers about how to talk you out of it in that regard. All right, so very important. So th that's, <laughs> that's just as important as learning physical techniques, probably more important. I mean, you can't stop someone just coming out, out of a bush and attacking you, but you can stop, you can verbally de-escalate somebody and calm them down in a friendly but firm manner. Do not swear, do not raise your voice, but be firm like I am now. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bump in you. I'm really sorry about that. Okay, so you have a smile on your face. But don't go, oh, I'm sorry. Like, they don't do that either because then they think you're a whip and then I'm like, ah, I'll get this person. <laughs> like, naturally, some people are like that. They might bully you if they think you're, think you're a target. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bump into you. Blah, blah, things like that, okay? So, next stage is palm push. Into the sternum as a non-aggressive push or strike. Not so much a strike. It's just pushing somebody out of the way. Maybe they've grabbed me in a situation. I just push them. Maybe for women, it's a sexual harassment. The guy's really grabbing you and they're, you know, within their six feet, but they shouldn't be. By the way, just tell them you've got COVID-19 if someone comes up too close to you. I don't want them to be. <laughs> so, oh, I've got COVID. Oh, I'm going to be there, you know, I start coughing on them. And that could be a very good line of defense. I say, oh, 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 I've got COVID-19. You wouldn't have come too close. That's a good one for the girls who don't want these boys to come too close to them, all right? So, yeah, you can use it to your advantage to say, and, and start coughing and asking. Whatever, that's not a bad one. You've got to come up with excuses, you know, things like that. There's other ones we used to say as well, different schools and telling the kids what to say, what not to say, things like that, very important. So yes, you'll learn all that as part of this. I'm very good with that. I like to, like, I really don't want anyone to fight at all. I really don't like fighting. But yes, if my life's in danger, I'm going to protect it. 
like I, I had to do personally against five guys in China trying to rob me. Yes, it works. <laughs> All right. I've had a lot of experience in this striking, but that worked. All right, so palm push, hands up, right foot back, hands up. And just, just practice this action. And see, I get my hips in it. You know, I'm a mad tennis player. Boom. The first 20 years of life, not life, uh, of working life was full-time martial arts and tennis. That's all I did for a living. All right, tennis first, coaching and then training in martial art. Then that became from the black belt and I started teaching that. And that kind of took over from the martial art, from the tennis. Then I got a little bit older and I started doing financial services and did that part-time. <laughs> Another story. But now in America, back to a full-time plus some acting and some other things with pickleball. Okay, so just here, just some leagues we're doing as well. So they're pushing out. See, I move my hips, like tennis shot, boom. It's like pickleball we're doing now too, get those hips in for the shot so you get more power. Rather than just using the arm power, same principle. That's why the tennis players, Roger Federer, uh, 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 Djokovic, all these guys, they're not built like Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? They're quite skinny. Um, not skinny, but they're, they're lean and fit, but, but they can get a lot of power because it's in their hip and their timing. So that palm push. Good, excellent. Get those hips in. Change stance, same again. You may be in a position where you're in a different stance. You've got to learn to fend off each stance. So next lesson, we'll do basic movement up and down. This is lesson one. This is the beginner lesson one in Hapkido. All right, so that's good. All right, so now I'll get all a minute aligned towards the kicking next, next lesson. So we're going to do some knee up exercises. So from your angle here, knee up, knee up, knee up, knee up, knee up, knee up, right, knee up, knee up. That's it, knee up. That's it, hands up, hands up. Not like that, like that. Get the hands here and knee up, knees up, high skin. Right. Now someone grab both my hands and I can drive the knee through, okay? It's like, boom, I drive the knee through. Uh, and also your kicks come from this, which is next lesson, the kicking techniques. But again, I don't want people getting in this concept of thinking they have to kick someone to protect themselves. They don't. There's a lot of stuff you can do before you have to kick. Women's self-defense are a little bit different from men's self-defense to children's. That's why I have to segregate the techniques. Some work for women, men, children, and some don't work for them, depending on their height, their size, and everything else, okay? All right, knee up. Well done. Okay, now I want to finish today's lesson with the breathing exercise. By the way, this is called horse riding form. All right, we do a lot of this in pickleball. See, my feet are quite wide apart. Now I bend my knees. Okay, so do that. All right, that's good. Do that. That's horse riding form. We do that in pickleball. Those that don't know, see my Facebook page, see what a mad pickleball player I am now. <laughs> and getting leagues going and all sorts of fun things. So it's a really good game. It's an outdoor game too and a lot of fun. Okay, so breathing and deep breathing. I've been emphasizing this on my Facebook as well. Deep breathing. Even I have to make sure I remember to do it every day. But even though I'm breathing, you know, pickleball, you run around there, you know, get a few breaths back. But you've got to consciously do your deep breathing every day. And this is the perfect way of doing it. Five seconds in. Hold it for five seconds and five seconds out. Now, in your mind, you're going to say one and two and three. So I can't talk as I'm breathing, so I'm just going to do the action, and you've got to think five seconds. So horse riding form. Now I do the open hand because I'm getting to use the key energy, drawing in the key energy. Breathing. Here we go. In for five. Hold for five. Out for five. And then later on, you do it a bit longer, etc. Here we go. Parallel. Excellent, Paul. So for those watching again on YouTube or in cinemas around the world, <laughs> when the lottery opened again, <laughs> cinema makes up kiddo cinema. All right, so 
Uh, the deep breathing, just to let you know, you can feel a bit dizzy with deep breathing, but you do have to get used to it. So just don't go bull at the gate and do all this deep breathing and go swimming. That's called hyperventilating. You could actually pass out. So you've got to get used to it. So you do it a little bit. Just those three is enough. Five seconds, five seconds. And then later on, you'll fill your lungs, you get better uh, oxygenation and, and Tai Chi Chi Gong, which uh, my great friends, Joshua and Jeremy Rorty, known as the Tai Chi Twins, as well as the uh, Wonder Twins. <laughs> they partnered me from 1998. We were first won our first event together at the American Black Belt Championships in the Korean division. We won the self-defense. That's when I first met them, came from Australia, not knowing anybody, found them, needed some people to throw around for the tournament. And lo and behold, we got them. And then uh, we've won many, many titles since then together. We actually competed together from 1998 to 2013 until they too got too old for it. No, nah, just kidding. They couldn't quite make it after that, but then I got this <laughs> from there as well. But they were fantastic. We're back in contact now, living in America full on. And uh, the, their videos of this are sensational. Uh, and Tai Chi uh, is unbelievable. So $40 for the video set and you get a free Zoom lesson included. So if you're interested in that, let me know through Messenger or through through uh, through my Facebook as well. But yeah, for those who are watching, if you're not sure, my, my website's marshallmotivation.com. Marshall as in martial arts, not Marshall's the shop. Or in Australia, remember Paul, holler for a Marshall, remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> holler for a Marshall, that was a battery, right? <laughs> Big car battery. <laughs> Paul, remember that back in Australia. Hold on for a marshal there. And they bring a car battery to your car, right? I remember the ads on TV. M-A-R-S-H. So obviously martial arts is M-A-R-T-I-A-L. For those who didn't know, martial arts. So my website is Marshall. I've got plenty of websites, but that's the main one. MarshallMotivation.com. You can contact me from there. You get on this YouTube channel from there and subscribe. Watch all these great videos. You see me getting excited about pickleball as well. If you're interested in that, let me know. And uh, but martial arts is just great for you. And I'm obviously offering lessons on Zoom as we're doing with Paul. And Paul's uh, nicely uh, let himself be known on Zoom, on sorry, on on, um, on the uh, Facebook. We can see he's doing the actions like this, for example. And of course on my YouTube channel. So it's very good of him to be out there. Now, if you need a car, as I said, see that man. Brand new cars. What's a website, Paul, for your car company? Carleasingconcierge.com. We'll protect you from the car sales.com. He will save you. In fact, he will protect you from all those car dealers that are trying to rip you off, right, Paul? Correct. Correct. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Okay, well done. So we'll finish lesson one. We'll finish with our traditional bow, everybody. A parallel. Attention. Chere kunde. Hapkin. Hapkin. Bye, everybody. We'll see you for lesson two. <laughs>